right, now what I'm using is a regular sheet of half inch plywood. All right, once you've gone at it with the gloss black, you want to finish it with the light mist of matte black. Now, the matte black paint that I like is this particular brand, and you get it at Lowe's. Buy the Walmart matte black. It just doesn't cover. It's like water, practically. So this is from Lowe's, and you want to just knock the shine down. that particular paint is not marked as to it just has the color on the lid so the way you tell is that one lid is glossy and one lid is a mattish color or texture so now what this has done is this has taken a lot of the shine off of the board and this is already getting hot this has only been out in the sun for probably 20 minutes and keep in mind it's also uh, evaporating. These were panels that I made uh, over a year ago that sat in the solar oven that I totally neglected but all the woods actually held up pretty good. I got to fix a lot of things on this that didn't work out but the only thing that really had a problem was the floor which has been sitting in water this whole time and uh, well but the wood is in great shape. So here is a dark metal car that's been sitting out in the sun all day. Uh, it is has a hot point of 153 degrees. If you look in the back window, the glass is throwing it off. So I'm going to go inside and see what the interior temperature is. Whoa! So basically we're making one of these. Man! Holy... Okay, I'm going to find a spot in there. So we are looking at 150, it's about the same. This glass right here is 140. We're gonna see how this is, what the sunlight has done. It basically fried everything in there. So you have, really poor design actually, but what you have, basically have what we're making standard on this car. Now one idea that you could do if your car actually is parked in the sun and it's close to your house is you could crack your window and put a vent that goes from here in one side and out the other and you can actually use your car as a giant forced heater. Now it's only going to work during the daytime, only going to work whenever it's sunny out and uh, probably would be more hassle than it's worth, but I mean these Jeez, if you've ever gotten into a hot car, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, what I've done is on the back side, I've lined this with something called tacky tape. It's uh, designed for metal roofing. It costs about, you know, about five or six bucks for a roll of it. You probably do three of these with one roll. Of, I actually like to double it up. It's designed to get very sticky as it gets hot, and this is what holds metal roofing sheets together. It's really good stuff. And what it does is it creates a very good gasket. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this gap right here. I have a one and a half inch screw and you can see that it's not gonna come out the front there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Now, I start, I drill it like normal, okay? And then when you get to this point, you, re you reverse the drill. And you can see, I don't know if you saw the sawdust kick up, but it actually just basically strips the whole top board out. So now you're grabbing on the bottom. And you can see how good that worked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do five really quick. Maybe a little awkward because I normally work over there, but
for plywood you want to go about every six inches on this because it has a tendency to buckle a little bit if you have a little area like that that didn't go down good just back up and do that all right so if you did it right you should have something like that you can actually just take a carpet knife and cut the extra off it doesn't become extra adhesive until it gets really really hot the insides like this pretty flush there there's the the barrier wherever that stuff is so that should pretty much hold the the air really tight and this will be the collector and then the glass is gonna sit right on top at this point you are gonna want to go ahead and drill your holes because um, you you're gonna have sawdust that kicks out when you drill them a half inch to three quarters of an inch in diameter you don't want to run into this bar down here so that's about an inch long so you want to center the hole as good as you can there you're going to be using a blower fan for this and preferably a small solar blower fan with a couple hundred cubic feet per minute the difference between a blower fan and a compressor is the fan that you use in your house like just a cheap big box fan cost ten dollars will move more air volume in about an hour then a regular air compressor will move over its entire lifetime so you, you don't need high pressure for this you just need to get a nice flow of air through there so the more holes you have the more air volume that you're gonna get so you can do one there one there one there and then tie them together into one tube or you could just do one on one if you're gonna do just one do one on one quarter and one way over here on the other I am going to be putting the glass directly into this because you want to put a, a very, very thin bead of silicone around this. You don't want to get too carried away with it because um, it'll get messy. And if you ever need to remove the glass, I just drill the holes. Now I'm doing a compressor fitting because I'm going to be using this as an air volume expander. I'm going to be seeing, I'm going to be running some tests on that. So I'm going to, you're not going to want to do this because using an air compressor to run air into your house is a dumb idea you want to have some holes for a larger volume but what I mentioned about the sawdust is true I got sawdust here and there from the drill so you can just take some black spray paint and just knock that stuff off it'll actually finish off your panel and then here is the kicker that we're going to be using for a heat uh, additive this is a large piece of stainless steel wall it costs like a, I don't know a few bucks for a piece like this you don't have to do this but what I'm going to do is, you're going to notice it's a bright silvery color. So since it's not going to be exposed to anything, we're just going to be spreading this. You don't need much of this. You just want to spread it to make like a mesh throughout your entire board. This is actually going to take a little bit more than I anticipated. But you want to spread it as much as possible. So what I'm going to do is just put this piece, one piece in here for right now. And once you have it like that, okay, you give it a black spray coat. Because there's no water or anything that's going to become, that, that black will bake onto there and stay. So you make yourself a black furry. What this is going to do, this is going to pick up the volume this is going to actually give the air an additional surface that it has to run through. 